great spirit of God. Open our eyes. And this is the faith that overcomes even our faith. This is number one. The faith of God that produces results in your life always starts with revelation. Bible faith, please hear me, always starts with revelation. You can never manifest true faith until there is a revelation. A revelation. The first piece of the equation of faith is revelation. And there are two dimensions to revelation. Please look up. The first is study. 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 And the second is meditation. You don't have revelation just by wishing. Study. It first starts by searching out. You cannot have faith in what you do not know. I love this baby. Come. Ah, she's afraid. She's going to run to her mother now. <laughs> May God bless one, one of these days Our children will open the service for us All of them will just hold the mic And blast in tongues for 10 minutes Oh yes, many of them pray in tongues At their age we didn't even know whether but, but God is doing a lot of work in our children Hallelujah Praise the Lord Let's continue Revelation So it starts with diligently searching Everybody say diligently searching now, the problem with many believers, you cannot spend your life just reading newspapers, chase magazines, name them, all those kinds of rubbish and expect to have Bible faith. Even if there is a column where a man of God quickly shared something, faith doesn't come that way. Brothers and sisters, there is an investment you must make in studying the word. Look at me. This is your promised land. You must walk through it. Every time you read the Bible, it's like you are walking through your promised land to see what God has given you, to see what has been apportioned to you. So as I study this, I see, Halabakatayada, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall also do greater works than this. As I study, I begin to see, if he be willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command thee this day. Right? That you will be exalted above all nations and these blessings will come upon you and overtake you. Are you getting my point? When you are studying the Bible, imagine that you are walking around your land of promise. When you study the Bible, you are seeing the things that have been paid for. Are you getting my point? That cancer is killing you. And you take the Bible and you search. And you see where he hung on that cross and he said, It is finished. But that has not entered you. You are aware. Remember, you are getting revelation and this is only the first part. That's why I'm telling you what many people call faith is not faith. So I begin to walk around the promised land. Like you told Abraham, he said, from where thou art, lift up your eyes and look eastward, northward. That's what you do. When you begin to study, it's like you are walking through your land of promise. Brothers and sisters, you may be soaking Gary, just walk through the land. You are, you are no problem. There is no stove to boil the Indomie. Break it as you are eating. Walk, walk. <laughs> you think I don't know how that thing works? be fooled by what you see there is a testimony of the transition of faith see that I was sharing with a lady that once upon a time I used to buy bread and cut it and put granite there's a way you arrange it so that with every bite 
you know, the whole surface area is covered, you push it in. You are not the first to do it. So all that insult, you've been insulting God, you said, look, there are people who did not even have the bread. Right? And God brought them out of it. So he will, he will bring you up. We just sang that our status is changing. But it starts as I walk through the land of promise. Everybody say the word of God is my land of promise. Say one more time, the word of God. I know tonight's teaching is very simple, but don't trivialize the power of it. The word of God is my land of promise. Ha! So I study, brothers and sisters. See, as I'm, I feel like just sitting down to start studying the Bible. As I'm just talking to you now. A weak person, a non-entity, nobody knows you. But when you walk through that land of promise, you are already engaging something. You may not understand. There's, I'm not denying the, look, I'm not denying the fact that you are in pain. Don't get me wrong. Faith does not deny what is happening. You see that? Aha. Uh -huh. So if I'm sick and I say, I have headache, it's not negative confession. No. Please. If you want to say you are well, say you are well. But if I'm sick and I tell you something is, is pinching me here, it's not lack of faith. Are you getting my point? Many of us have felt so guilty. We don't even know when you are serious, when you are saying the real thing or not. You say, bros, can we get to it in here? I say, I'm rich. Say, no, no, no. The issue is, you know, if you don't want to say, okay, there's nothing exactly in the pocket. Please, don't feel embarrassed. Don't make it look like the word of God makes you a fool. Are you getting what I'm saying? You don't just speak anyhow and then things change. Speaking is a law. The Bible says a curse causeless shall not stand. Are you getting what I'm saying? So don't just say if I speak anyhow, whether I believe it or not, something I think be wise. That's why we are growing. Praise God. Study. So I walk through this thing. Look, let me tell you how I study. Let me show you how I study. I don't study foolishly. I study strategically. Everybody says strategically. My goal of studying the Bible is not to crime scriptures. There are real needs on ground. Criming does very little in helping you produce results. I hope you are aware. You can cram Genesis to Revelation. The part you truly act out in faith is the part that works for you. Is that true? So, I write different aspects of my life that I want to see the glory of God revealed. I write ministry. I write my finances. Are you following me now? Different aspects. And I begin to walk through the garden of the Lord. My promised land. Finding out what God's idea. What are his promises? What is his? What does his word have to tell me about this? How far can I be anointed? To what limit? The problem is. You see the reason why the devil kills your word study life right see when the devil wants to destroy you there are three things he just attacks it's very easy number one he kills your word life number two he kills your prayer life number three he kills your corporate fellowship life when these three are dead you are finished it's as simple as that just three things you want to go and study and all of a sudden that lukewarmness notice Ladies, you've read novels that are two times larger than this. But to read just three or four pages, that's to tell you there is a devil that does not want you to see something. Are you getting my point? I can give you a storybook and you can read. Many of you have gone to the library. You have gone to different things. There are many people who in your place of work, you are given tasks that require you reading voluminous books and you do all of that within a week but how come when it comes to studying this you thought it's because the letters are small you brought you bought large letter edition it still is big there is a there is a spirit hallelujah everybody says study it starts there let me not deceive you brothers and sisters faith is not cheap if you understand this, you will respect everyone who walks by faith. True Bible faith starts the encounter of the world. When you study, you find the promises. When you find the promises, 
The next thing is meditation. Everybody say meditation. It's still part of getting to the point of revelation. I'm trying to break down how faith truly works. Say meditation. What is meditation? The word meditation as, as, is not just to, to speak aloud. The word meditation is the process that makes a revelation become your own. You see that? Okay, now you are studying. He told Peter, for instance, cast your net to the right side. How does that story relate to your situation in Zaria? Meditation. Meditation begins to draw out the spirit of that word. It begins to personalize it. It's in the place of meditation that some of us even have encounters. Real encounters. While you are meditating under a heavy unction, you can sleep and then you have a dream. In that dream, you can have encounters. Some of you can see men of God. Some of you can see people. And that thing crystallizes your conviction. You get up and hold that scripture and say, I caught this. See that? When, when there is meditation, the end of it is conviction. The whole goal of revelation is to bring you to a point of conviction. Another word is persuasion. I'm showing you how Bible faith starts. Persuasion. Persuasion. If you are not persuaded, you cannot finish the equation. Because you will doubt on the way. So you must strengthen your persuasion before the journey begins. Hallelujah. You don't believe in tithing. You just did it because your pastor lashed at you and said, Look, you have not been paying tithe. I'm, I'm watching those who are standing. I'm working in the same office with you. It's, it's me that pays your salary. Eh? And, and you get angry. And you get afraid. And so just to please your pastor, you just squeeze your envelope and frown and stand. And you lift it up, let him see you. Oh, I'm dropping it now. You won't be blessed that way. That's mechanical. I never do things until I have the